Yeah, man. I mean, I think we, we kind of go hand in hand with not necessarily aesthetic uh, in terms of like how you look in terms of your float and whatnot. Obviously, you want that to be the same for the most part. But we also focus uh, on a happy medium between what your hand's supposed to look like for the most part and then how that goes hand in hand with the sound quality that you're producing. Um, we like to break everything down first from the general approach of how do you create a crap ton of sound like fresh off the bat like how do you create a ton of sound and then from there we hone that into mechanics and minute details of critically thinking about what your hands are supposed to be doing at whatever points or for whatever specific skill sets that we're asking you to play um and then that goes into you know how like where the stick lies in the hand itself what fingers you're supposed to feel the stick in at whatever point in time how you're playing roles, like what it's supposed to feel like in the left hand. So it all kind of just goes hand in hand uh, in terms of the aesthetic and the quality of sounds. Not necessarily the production, because that's going to come in time. But the quality of sound is something that we preach for sure. And I think a lot of times there becomes this debate between East Coast, West Coast, this, that, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, it's sound quality like that's that what that's what it boils down to um the motions might not be the same mm -hmm. um maybe some people equate east coast to a little bit more squared off and west coast to a little bit more rounded fluid f floaty but like i feel like those are just motions that happen in between the stick actually striking the drum head but at the end of the day it's still what are you thinking about in between to get the sound quality to resonate out of the drum head and the stick? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, like I, like for instance, if you watch like maybe a pulse versus a cadets, there's definitely like maybe a more fluid movement in a pulse. Like you do the molar technique, which I can't do at all. <laughs> never, never, I've never practiced it at all, but I'm probably sure I can't do it. So maybe in a nutshell, very, very, I'm putting you on the spot here. You don't have to get super detailed, but you're talking like eight on a hand, accent tap, something like that. Things that you guys are talking about with your kids, whether it's high school, Pulse Open, Mandarins, Blue Knights, whatever group you're in front of, like you have to make sure you're doing this to achieve a good sound quality. And I know that's kind of like deep, but. <laughs> oh, totally. Um, I think. There's a few things that kind of go into that where if we're going to talk about the motion, first of all, um, I like to think about it as, you know, you're dribbling a basketball, right? I'm sure yes. all of us have that at some point. Um, you're just dribbling it with, you know, mostly forearm to start. And then the follow through is the most important part after that, you know, that's how you get that extra little bit of pop out of your sound to create a good amount of full bodied sound, right? And then for your left hand, create the same exact motion the only difference is your left hand is just facing a different way or you're turning the wrist a certain way but in terms of the actual arm itself it's moving the exact same way it shouldn't be going in or out as much as you know i see a lot of people doing nowadays it's not a bad thing it's just a different sound it's a different style it's a different approach but for me i've always heard from glenn crosby um how are your hands going to sound the same if they're not moving the same you know how are your arms going to try and travel out of 45 to the left and out and your your right hand's going to be moving up and down how in good god's name is that going to sound the same you know yeah so besides putting a ton of extra effort into that left hand to try and force that sound in there so i guess that would be the first thing second thing don't be afraid to feel the stick vibrate in the hand like very neutral right you have your little bit of a fulcrum up in the top three fingers or middle two fingers depending on how you teach it you know just let it relax and as long as you have that relaxed arm motion like you're dribbling or shooting a basketball have a nice relaxed neutral hand let the stick vibrate same thing in the left hand but just let the stick sit in the webbing of the hand as opposed to trying to feel any sort of pressure in the fulcrum of the hand you know and i think yeah. for the most part that's pretty much it because that, that kind of takes a lot of different ideolo ideologies and just kind of disperses or kind of, I guess, 
breaks them down into two bigger ideas, you know? Yeah, for sure. I, I like to tell my kids, and I think we've done a lot of this on the podcast, at least with Mike and I, like asking other people uh, their sort of philosophies. I love using sports references when I'm teaching kids, especially basketball, because I feel like it's so fluid and there's so much like motion involved that relates with like pushing a basketball down to the floor and letting it come back up into the hand and like dribbling hand to hand, especially like when I'm talking to kids about playing like triplet actions, like duck, 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 I was like, dude, just like dribbling hand to hand, right, left, between mm-hmm. the legs, like whatever. And just having that sort of like firmness in the hand, but not like tense pressure in the hand um so i love that anytime people bring up sports and basketball i'm like yes this is about to be good <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's in, I, I love the fact that you brought up the neutral hand approach and i think that's becoming kind of a universal thing like across the board in the activity indoor and outdoor whereas i would put forth like that wasn't the case like in the 90s 2000s like correct me if i'm wrong evan i i, I would be surprised if like late 90, 90s cadets were preaching neutral hand, just watching them play. I think it's become more prevalent in modern times for people to approach drumming as, are you creating the same sound as the person next to you over, are you moving the exact same way as the person next to you? Fair. Um, which is just not from a physiological standpoint possible for six foot five snare drummer to move and play the exact same as five foot eight snare drummer standing next to them. They're going to have different shape hands. They're going to have different size hands. They're going to have different weight in the hands. They're going to have different length in their fingers. Like they're probably not going to be able to move the exact same way and produce the exact same sound. Like that's, I don't think that that's, I I feel like that's where the shift is kind of maybe moving uh, in modern marching percussion, at least in my opinion. Definitely. But uh, where I was also going to take that was Frankie said the exact same thing and he works with crown and then Richard saying the same thing about a West coast style group. You can preach the same thing, but the end result, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying this is a, a talk of the, the quality of the groups, more of the approach and the look that results of it. You can talk about the same hand pressure. You can talk about that stuff, but I think the vibe of the two groups is still totally different, but that, concept of neutral hand or that approach to feeling that stick vibrate and holding but not squeezing and so on it is uniform that's Mm -hmm. really interesting to me that you can have two completely different results with probably a pretty similar like underlying approach yeah i mean and i think too a lot of times like the vibe or maybe the uh the motion isn't necessarily indicative of the style or the instruction but sometimes like of the arrangement, like what the arranger is trying to go for mm-hmm. or the type of style the music is calling for. Like if you gave, I don't know, Rhythm X a pulse book and pulse a Rhythm X book, like it might not look the same as they do year to year just because what it's being required to do is, is just a little bit different. Um, and that's, I don't know. That's to each his own, like on mm-hmm. what you prefer or like what you like. I mean, that's the artistic nature behind the activity, which is cool. You get to see different styles reflected out of different ideas. So whatever. 